This is the homework solve for section 12.6 in M100 Basic Mathematics. This section starts on page 809, and I am going to demonstrate the five homework problems that are assigned for this section. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and walk through the process here. With the first problem, I've got much of it set up, and I'll explain how I, how I did those um, problems and then we'll walk through the other four uh, in more detail. So you should be able to see the screen here and you'll notice that problem number 27, according to the book, uh, refers to the table in exercise 19 on the same page. So you'll notice that the first thing I did is I wrote in my X and Y values and then I in the third column, I squared each of the X values. So I got 16, 25, 36, 49, and 100. That was from squaring the X values. I got the Y squared column by squaring the Y values. Eight squared, 64, 10 squared is 100, and so forth. And then the XY column was um, found by multiplying my X and Y values together. Now be careful here because some people will add them and you're supposed to multiply. So four times eight is 32. 5 times 10 is 50, and so forth, all the way down. There are five points here. You can see that uh, 4, 8, 5, 10, 6, 12, 7, 12, and 10, 16, that gives us five points. So that means that n equals 5. That's how we got that value there. So then I added each of the columns down, and I got my values for sigma x, sigma y, sigma x squared, sigma y squared, and sigma xy. And using that information, I'm going to find the correlation coefficient, and then I will find the line of best fit. So when we move over here to the R equation, um, you will notice that I plugged in the values to the formula that is at the top of page 812. I'm not going to write out that whole formula here, but I will point out to you each of the values. So R equals N, which is five, times sigma xy. So if you look back at the column, you see that the sigma xy value is right there. So that's what I plugged in here, 5 times 398, minus sigma x, which is 32, times sigma y, which is 58. Again, referring to all of the values that I found. Divided by n times sigma x squared. The sigma x squared is 226, uh, minus sigma x, 32, which I then square. And then under the second radical, it's n times sigma y squared minus the value of sigma y, which was 58, and then I square it. So when I do that, uh, I get 5 times 398 is 1990, minus 32 times 58 is uh, 1856. And then when I subtract those values, I'm going to pull up my calculator here on my computer, 1990 minus 1856 is 134. That's 134. And under the radicals, 1130 minus 1024 is 106. And 3540 minus 3364 is 13.3. <clears throat> I'm sorry, it's 176. And when I take the square root, I get 13.3 and 10.3. You can see that I rounded each of those to the nearest tenth. And you may have, you know, rounded it out further to the hundredth or the thousandth. That's okay. Um, if you round it a little bit differently than I do, you might have a slightly different answer, but if you did it mathematically correctly, I'm not going to worry about it. So now 10.3 times 13.3 equals 136.99. So I have 134 over 136.99. And when I divide that out, 134 divided by 136.99, I get 0 0.978, which is 0 0.98. That is an exceptional, exceptional correlation. That means that the line of best fit that we find is going to fit really, really nicely. Okay, so now we need to find that line. And remember, to do that, we need to find the M and the B. 
And hopefully you remember from the lecture that the M is very simple to find because the M is simply going to be the same numerator that we just found in R, which is 134, divided by the, the number under the first radical in your denominator, in this case, 106. You don't have to do more computation. You can just plug those values into your calculator and you will find the solution. And M in this case is 1.26. Now, we need that M, that value, that's the slope, remember. We need that to find B. Because remember the B formula, which is at the top of page 816 in your book, the B formula is sigma Y minus M, the M you just found, times sigma X, divided by N which of course in this problem is five. So we'll plug those values in. Remember that the sigma y, if you look over here, is 58 minus the m you just found, 1.26 times sigma x, which is 32, divided by the n, which is five. So this is going to be 58 minus, got to do a little computation here, 1.26 times 32. When you do that, you get 40.32 divided by 5. And then, of course, we are going to subtract 58. And when we do that, I'm sorry, subtract that from 58. I, my calculator is acting up just a little bit. Minus 40.32 equals 17.68 divided by 5. And then when we divide that out, we get 3.536, 3.536. You might choose to round that to 3.54 or even just 3.5. I'm going to round it to the hundredths place since that's what the slope is rounded to. So then the equation of this line, which I'll write right in here, is that y equals m 1.26x plus 3.54. And as I said, based on our correlation coefficient, which was 0.98, this is an excellent line of fit. So that was problem number 27. Now I want to look at problem number 33. I'm going to pull that up. And I've got it, uh, I've got the table created already. I haven't filled in all the values. We'll walk through that together. So we're going to square our x values in the third column. So 10, or I'm sorry, 100 squared is 10,000. 80 squared is 6,400. 60 squared is 3,600, and we've got a couple of those. 40 squared is 1,600, and 20 squared is 400. So again, <clears throat> excuse me, I got those values just by squaring the first column. Now I'm going to square the y, uh, the y column, and these are a little easier because the numbers are smaller. So 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36. I've got a couple of those and eight squared is 64. Now we're gonna multiply the first two column values together, the X and the Y. So 100 times two is 200, 80 times three is 240, 60 times five is 300, 60 times six is 360, 40 times six is 240, and 20 times eight is 160. I don't have these in very good lines. My, um, my, accuracy of them being across from one another is a little off, but that's okay. And then what is N? Well, remember, N is the number of points that we're looking at, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six points, so N equals six. So now we add the columns down. So in this first column, I'm going to add these X values. So 100 plus 80 is 180, plus 60 is 240, 240 plus 60 is 300, plus another 40 is 340, and 20 is 360. Remember, these are our sigmas. 
in the y column, 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 5 is 10. 10 plus 6 is 16. 16 plus 6 is 22, plus 8 is 30. Uh, fortunately, in the third column, even though these numbers are really big, they're in hundreds, so they're pretty easy to add. So 10,000 plus 6,400 is 16,400, plus 3,600 is 20,000, uh, plus 3,600 is 23,600, plus another 1,600 is 25,200, plus 400 is 25,600. I'll try and write that a little bit more in the box. 25,600. There we go. The y co a squared column. 4 plus 9 is 13. 13 plus 25 is 38. 38 plus 36 is 74. And 74 plus 36 is 110 plus 64 is 174. And then the XY column, not too painful to add, uh, 200, 440, 740, 1100, 1340, 1500. So a lot of these numbers are pretty nice to use. That's kind of helpful. All right. So again, remember, I'm not going to do this every time, but I'll do it one more time. This is your sigma X, sigma Y, sigma X squared, sigma Y squared, sigma XY, and then of course, n equals 6. These are the values that you need to plug in for r. So now we're going to go to the next page and we're going to plug those values in for r. Again, I'm just going to plug them in without writing out the r formula that is on page 812. So we're finding r equals n, n was 6, times sigma xy. Sigma xy is 1500 minus sigma x, which is 360, times sigma y was 30, all divided by n, which again is 6, times sigma x squared, which is 25,600, pretty big number, minus sigma x, which was 360, squared. That's my first radical. Second radical is again n times sigma y squared. Oops. Sigma y squared was 174 minus the value of sigma y, which was 30 squared. So when I multiply this out, 6 times 1500. 6 times 1500 is 9,000 minus 360 times 30. I think I know what this is in my head, but I don't want to take a chance of making the mistake. So I'm going to go ahead and put it into my calculator just to make sure. I think it's 10,800, but I want to be confident. Yes, it is minus 10,800 divided by, whoa, now these numbers get big. Six times 25,600. Not going to do that in my head. So six, times 25,600 is 153,600 minus 360 squared. 360 squared is 129,600 times, six times 174. It's not a number that is easy to do in my head, so I'll multiply it out. 1044 minus 30 squared is 900. I can do that one in my head. All right, so now we want to clean this up. Go to the next line. 9,000 minus 10,800 is negative 1,800 divided by the square root of 153,600 minus 129,600 is 24,000. And then the square root of 1044 minus 900, I can do that in my head, that's 144. So this is going to be negative 1800 over the square root of 24,000 is 154.9 
times the square root of 144, which is an integer 12, I can do that mentally. So that's negative 1800 over 154.9 times 12 is 1858. Point eight, And when you divide negative 1800 by 1858.8, you get negative 0 0.96. R is negative 0 0.96. That's a pretty good, uh, that's a very good um, correlation. So we know that the equation we find is going to be a very good line of fit. And we're going to do that now. Now remember that your m can be found by using the original numerator from r, which is negative 1800, divided by the value under the radical before you, um, before you take the square root. So that value is 24,000. And when you divide that out, eight, negative 1800, divided by 24,000, it's going to be a small number. It's negative 0 0.075. Okay, now the book actually rounds it, it looks like, to negative 0 0.08. Um, you could do that. I'm going to leave it at uh, 0 0.075 for right now since it's a nice terminating decimal because I want to be as accurate as I can with my equation. So now when I go to B, remember that B is sigma y minus m times sigma x. I'm not going to write this every time, but I'll do it this one more time. And so we look back at sigma y is 30. Oh, I changed color on accident. Hang on a second here. I want to stay with the black. And it also changed the font size. There we go. 30 minus, now be careful here, folks. This is important. Remember your m is negative, negative 0 0.075 times sigma x, and sigma x was 360 divided by n, which is 6. Now remember, this double negative minus a negative right here, they're going to make a positive. Very important that you're careful about that. So this is going to be 30 plus 0 0.075 times 360, and I'm going to see what that equals. That equals 27. 30 plus 27 divided by 6 is 57 divided by 6. And 57 divided by 6 is 9.5. All right. So our answer, the equation of the line, is going to be y equals, and remember that m is negative, negative 0.075x plus 9.5. Again, I want to stress that if you had rounded that m to negative 0 0.08, perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I would have accepted it. It would have thrown off your b just a little bit. You might have gotten something just a little different than the 9.5, but that's okay as well. All right, so that was problem number 33. Now I want to look at problem number 35. Pull that up. Got it all ready to go. Now problem number 35 is about commuting to a pet shelter and they give the distance in miles that each employee has to commute and the time it takes in minutes. It asks us to find the correlation coefficient. Uh, remember you can skip part B and then the, the third part is determine the equation of the line of best fit. I have set up the table. You'll notice in the book it's drawn horizontally. I've set it up vertically and we're good to go. So. I'm going to create my columns and then I'm going to um, find the sigmas at the bottom. Oops, my pen keeps changing colors for some reason. It keeps defaulting to red. Don't want it to be red. Anyway, so sigma x squared is going to be found. These will be our sigmas down here. Sigma x squared um, is going to be found by squaring the first column. So 2 squared is 4. 15 squared is 225. 16 squared is 256. Now remember, these uh, first values are the number of miles that people live away from the pet clinic. Nine squared is 81. 21 squared is 441. I did that one in my head. I hope I got it right. And five squared is 25. Now we're going to find the y squared values. So we take the second column and we square it. Five squared is 25. 
25 squared is 625, 30 squared is 900, 20 squared is 400, 35 squared, not going to do that one in my head. I know my square is up to 25 pretty well, but once I get beyond that, okay, that's 1225, and 10 squared is 100. Now I'm going to multiply my xy's together. So 2 times 5 is 10. 15 times 25 is, I think it's 375, but I want to make sure not to make a mistake because making a mistake in a video, it's a real pain to edit. Yep, 375. 16 times 30 is 480. 9 times 20 is 180. 21 times 35, I'm going to do that on the calculator as well, just because I don't want to screw up. 735. And 5 times 10 is 50. And then how many employees are there? There are six of them. You can see there are six points, so n equals six. So now we add our columns. In the x column, 2 plus 15 is 17. 17 plus 16 is 33 plus, uh, these two add up to 30. So 33 plus 30 is 63, plus 5 is 68. Sometimes you can add what we call compatible numbers together, and it makes it a little bit easier. So column Y, 5 plus 25 is 30, plus 30 is 60, 60 plus 20 is 80, uh, 80 plus 35 is 115, and 10 is 125. So now uh, in the X squared column, I just want to make sure I'm not making any mistakes. So I'm actually going to um, add these on my calculator because the last thing I want to do is make a mistake when I am trying to show you how to do the problems correctly. Plus 441 and 25 is 466. So that third column should be 1032. And by the way, if I make a mistake, I'm sure that some of you will catch it and call me out on it and I'll have to go back and edit and that's perfectly fine. All right, in the Y squared column, everything's in hundreds or 25. So this is not too tough to add. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this uh, mentally. Uh, 650 uh, plus 900 is 1550. 1550 plus 400 is 1950. I'm going to go ahead and add the 100 down there to get 2050. And then 2050 plus 1200 would be 3250 plus another 25 is 3275. Oops. 75. And then in the last column, you know, I'm, I'm going to go back and add that previous column again just to make sure. So 650, 1550, 1950, 2050, 3050, yep, 3275, okay. And then in the XY column, 10 plus 375 is 385, um, 785, 865, 965, 1045, 1780, 1830, and then again, n equals six. These are the values that you need. Again, remember your first column is your sigma x's, your next column is your sigma y's and so forth. All right, so now I'm gonna go over to the next page and come on, there we go. And now we're going to find the r. Again, you can, um, you can refer to the formula for R on page 812. Remember, remember that R is N, which in this case, I believe, let's go back, is six. Yep, it's six. So I'm gonna write, there we go. Six times sigma XY, which is 1830 minus sigma x times sigma y, which is 68 times 125, divided by square root of n times sigma x squared, which is 1032, minus sigma x, which is 68 squared, times the second radical is n times sigma y squared. Sigma y squared is 32.75 minus sigma y, 125, which you then square. So I'm going to use the calculator on most of this because these numbers are not as friendly. So that's 6 
times 1830. And I know that as I, as I have to use the calculator and I go a little slower, that's advantageous for those of you who are following along and want to make sure that you're doing it correctly. You don't mind that I'm going a little more slowly. 68 times 25 is 8,500. In my denominator, <clears throat> excuse me, I have the square root of six times 1,032. 6192 minus 68 squared is 4624. The reason I have to use the calculator on my computer is because I forgot my own personal calculator at the office at IUN, and I'm not going to be getting up there anytime soon. Oh, I just noticed that up here I wrote in the letter N instead of writing in the number six, and that's okay. There's the number six. So it's um, six times 32.75 is 19,650 minus 125 squared is 15,625. All right, so we're rolling right along here. Okay, so now I'm going to find my numerator, 10,980 minus 8,500 is 2,480. Remember, you're gonna to wanna to hang on to that for finding your slope a little later. And then under the first radical, I need to make this a little wider if I can. There we go, that's better. Uh, 6192 minus 4624 is 1568. And then the second radical is 19,650 the y's are usually much larger numbers to deal with. That's very common. And it's 15,625 is 4,025. Okay, now remember you wanna hang on to that 1568 as well. That's gonna be the denominator of your slope in a little bit, not the square root. You don't take the square root first and use that value in your M. You just use the 1568 itself. So now we're going to have 2480 divided by, I'm going to take the square root of those numbers, uh, the square root of 4,025 I actually have up on my screen, so I'll do that first. So the second number is 63.4. That's the square root of the 4,025. And now the 1568 square root of that is 39.6. And again, notice I'm rounding those. If you did them on your calculator, I'm rounding those in the denominator to the nearest tenth. If you took it out a little further to be more detailed, that would be fine. Your answer would differ from mine just slightly. Um, there's a slight margin of error, will not count it wrong. So that's 2,480 divided by 39.6 times 63.4 is 2,510.64. And when I divide that out, 2480 divided by 2510.64, you're going to get, oh my, 0 0.9877, which is approximately 0 0.99, which is an excellent, excellent line of best fit. That is really, really good. So that, that's good data right there. Okay, um, by the way, just something that you might have noticed, and, and it's important that you notice this, the numerator and denominator, the way they relate to each other is that the denominator will always be larger than the numerator, okay? If you get a numerator that's bigger than your denominator, you've made a mistake. And the reason for that is because when the number on top is larger than the number on the bottom, then the value is greater than one. And our correlation coefficient has to be between negative one and positive one. So if you make a mistake, you'll know it if your number on top is larger than the number on the bottom. So now we're gonna find our M. Now remember the M, again, I wanna uh, remind you, it's the original numerator from your correlation coefficient, 2480, divided by the number under the first radical before you take the square root, which in this case is 1568, okay? And so we're gonna divide that out. 2480 divided by 1568. 
And when we do that, we get 1.58 approximately. I'm always going to round it to the nearest hundredth um, when I'm doing this, unless it's a terminating decimal like in the previous problem. And 1.58, I'm just checking. Yep, that's what the book says. So now we're going to find our B. Remember that B is sigma Y. So what was sigma Y again? Sigma Y was 125 minus 1 1.58 times sigma X. Sigma X was 68 divided by six. Notice I'm not writing out the entire formula every time now for you. So um, I'm going to use my calculator to find out what 1.58 is when multiplied times 68. I get 107.44. So that's going to equal 125 minus 107.44 divided by 6. And now I'm going to simplify that numerator. That gives me 17.56 divided by 6. And when I do that, divided by 6, I get 2.926 repeating. So I'm going to round that to 2.93. All right. Now, important point here, uh, if you've been following along, you found your M, you found your B. You still have to write the equation of the line. If you don't write the equation of the line in this form, then you're going to get it counted wrong, even if you found the M and the B. So your final answer is Y equals 1.58X plus 2.93. Now, folks, let me tell you something. On a test, if you were to um, find the wrong M and the wrong B, obviously you'd lose some points for that. But if you still remember to write the equation of the line, even with the incorrect M and B values, you'll still get credit for that, okay? So don't forget, it asks you to find the equation of the line of best fit. It doesn't just say find the slope and the y-intercept. It asks for the line. You need to write that out. All right, so now we're gonna look at number 37. Go ahead and pull that one up. And again, I've got it kind of preloaded here. So problem number 37 is another word problem. And it says, I actually need my reading glasses because I'm an old man. Okay, the high temperature for seven January days in Chicago, along with the number of cups of hot chocolate sold for those days at the C&C coffee shop are shown in the table below. So I think the idea here is in general that the proprietor of this place wants to find out, you know, is the amount of hot chocolate I that I sell related to the temperature outside. And I think that we would all agree that it seems like it could be that if the temperature gets colder, more people want hot chocolate. So that's what he's trying to figure out. And so the X column is the high temperature of the day, and the Y column is the number of cups of hot chocolate that were sold. And these numbers are pretty large. So I'm going to actually, in order to find my values, I'm going to need to use my calculator because I don't want to make any mistakes. So we're going to go ahead and find the X squared column. So X squared, oops, that's not right. Hang on a second. Um, so 42 squared, oh, I see what's going on here. There it is. 42 squared is 17, come on, 1764. So then we're going to do 38 squared is 1444. These are big numbers. I can do 20 squared in my head. 20 squared is 400. 30 squared is 900, 28 squared, 28 squared is 784, 35 squared, I think I know, but I don't want to risk it, so I will, yep, 1225, and 17 squared, I know that is 289. So now we'll go to the Y column and we'll square those. 35 squared, we did that a minute ago, so I know it's 1225. 45 squared, let me see what 45 squared is. I'm squaring each of these values. 20, 25, 60, I can do that one in my head. 60 squared is 3,600. 52 squared is 2,704. 
55 squared. I should be able to do that one in my head, but I can't. 3025. 47 squared. No way I can do that one mentally. 47 squared is 2209. And 65 squared is 4225. All right, folks. Now we're going to multiply together our x's and y's. And I, these are numbers I'm not even easily going to be able to do. So let's see, 42 times 35 is 1470. And again, the fact that I'm working through these slowly probably means that you're able to keep up. 38 times 45 is 1710. 20 times 60, I can do that one mentally, that's 1200. 30 times 52 is 1560, I can do that one in my head. 28 times 55 is 1540. 35 times 47 is 1645 and 17 times 65 is 1105. Now again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In this case, he was looking at seven days, so n equals seven in this problem. He's looking at um, the information over a week. So now we're gonna add all these values down to get our sigmas. And they're gonna be some big numbers. This is. This is a pretty, uh, um, it's not more complicated, but the numbers are a little harder to deal with. So um, if you can do this problem and feel pretty comfortable with it and the numbers don't intimidate you, you should be in good shape. So let me go ahead and add these together. I can do the first column, I think. 42 and 38 is 80, 100, 130, 158, 193, 210. So that wasn't too bad. Uh, the next column I'll do as well. 35 and 45 is 80. 140, 192, 197, 247, 294, 299, should be 359. Okay, now I'm gonna do the rest of these, uh, the calculator. So 17, 64, plus 14, 44, plus 400, 900 is 1300, plus 784 is 2084. 2084 plus, don't know why that popped up, 1225 plus 289. So that column is 6806. All right, next column, 1225 plus. Uh, 5625, I'm doing the next two numbers together. 5625 plus um, 2704 plus 3025 plus 2209 plus 4225 equals. Okay, uh, 19,013, big number. And then the XY column, again, I'm going to uh, add them on the calculator. So 1470 plus 1710 plus 1200 plus 1560 plus 1540. One of the advantages of me uh, doing these in your presence is that if you made a mistake, then you'll probably catch it more quickly. And that's 10,230. I am gonna double check that one because I was talking while I was doing it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven thousand. 77, 87, 96, 10,000. That's right, 10,230, so there we go. So we've got our values. Remember, those were all of our sigmas. And then again, of course, n equals seven. So here are the numbers that we will need to plug in to the formula on the next page. And so I am going to 
make sure that it's big enough to find my R's. And away we go. So remember R equals N, which is seven times sigma XY. You gotta refer back, 10,230 minus sigma X, which is 210 times sigma Y, 359 all divided by, and I'm gonna make a really big fraction bar here because the numbers in the bottom are kind of big. Seven times sigma x squared is 6806 minus sigma x 210 squared times n times sigma y squared which is 19,013 times sigma y, 359, which I then square. So we got some big numbers here, folks. That's okay. So we're gonna just multiply them out. Again, I'm using my calculator because of the size of the numbers. You can see why a calculator in this class is so important. So you've got 71,610 minus 210 times 359 is 75,390. I'm gonna do that one again just to make sure because I felt like my finger stumbled on the key a little bit, 359. Yep, that is correct. Divided by seven times 6806. Seven times 6806 is, remember, don't forget the radical sign, 47,000, 642 minus 210 squared. I think I know what that is, but I don't want to risk it. So yeah, 44,100 times, make this bigger, seven times 19, oh my gosh, seven times 19,013. This is a big number, 133,091. I forgot my minus sign in there, just noticed that, minus 359 squared, 128,881, which equals, so now we're gonna clean it up. 71,000, I'm working on the numerator now, 610 minus 75,390 equals negative 3780. You wanna hang on to that and don't forget the negative sign. Negative sign is important. I'm actually going to erase the, the equal sign because it's a little bit in my way. Um, there we go. And in the denominator, we're going to have um, 47,642 minus 44,100. And suddenly it's not such a horrible number, 3,542 times now we do the really big one, 133,091 minus 128,881. And that's not so horrible either. In fact, I didn't need quite as much space as I thought I did. So I'm gonna erase a little bit here so that I can continue to use my space efficiently. So this is negative 3780 on top. Remember that number. Over, now remember the 3,542, you're gonna want that um, for your denominator of your M, but right now we wanna find the square root of 3,542. And when we do that, we get a 59.5, 59.5. And now we want the square root of 42.10. And when we do that, we get 64.9. Notice if you're using your calculator that I am rounding these to the nearest tenths. Oh, I'm running out of room. I wrote too big. All right, well, that's okay. Have to go to another page, I guess. So then this is going to be negative 3780 over 59.5. We're gonna multiply this out. 59.5 times 64.9 is 3,861.55, which is good. Remember I told you in a previous example that you need to have the denominator larger than the numerator, otherwise you've made a mistake. 
And when you divide this out, negative 3780 divided by 3861.55, you get 0.978.9788, which is 0.98, which is a really good correlation. Most of the problems that we're doing here have really good correlations. So now, I don't know if I can pull up, tap anywhere. Yep, I'm going to go to a third page on this problem, and we're going to find our M and our B so that we can write the equation of the line. So remember that M is going to equal, let's go back to this page, M is going to equal the numerator of my R divided by the number under the first radical. Okay, so negative 3780 over 3542. Negative 3780 over 3542. So we're going to divide that out. And when we do, we get, remember it's negative, negative 1.067. So I'm going to call it 1.07. And checking the book, yep, negative 1.07 is correct, good. So now for B, remember that B is going to be, I'll go ahead and write it out here, sigma Y minus M times sigma X divided by N. Sigma Y, go back up and you can look at that, sigma Y was 359. So this is 359 minus, be careful, negative 1.07. Remember that your M is negative times sigma x, which was 210, divided by n, which is 7. And when you divide this out, remember this becomes minus a negative, becomes plus a positive. When you multiply 1.07 times 210, add it to 359 and divide by 7, you're going to get approximately 83.3. I'm not going to go through all of the arithmetic on this one just because you should be able to do that. And then remember your final answer is y equals negative 1.07x plus 83.3. That is the equation for the line of best fit. And again, it's a good line of fit because the correlation was 0.98, 98%. All right, we have one more problem left and then we are done. Let's go ahead and look at number 39. I like this one. The reason I like this one is because I bet there are some people who are in this class who are servers, waiters or waitresses, and you operate on tips. And so this is a great problem that you can relate to. It says the following table shows the amount of a dinner bill and the amount of money left as a tip for six customers at a restaurant. So imagine that you are a server at a restaurant and you have six customers one night. And the top number is the amount of their bill and the bottom number is how much they tipped you. Well. If you collected enough data over time, you might be able to find out if there's a decent correlation between the amount of money that uh, you're getting in tips and the bill. I know that ideally, you know, servers, it used to be 15% was the minimum. Now it's encouraged you tip at least 18% or even 20%. Um, but all that to say that we're just going to find the, um, we're going to find out if there is a relationship between the amount of money and tips that this person is getting and the amount of the bill. I would hope that there is, that means that they're a pretty consistent server. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna to have to use the calculator again because some of these numbers are a little bit uh, odd. So we're going to start with um, 35, we're gonna find the X squared column. So $35.20 squared. Okay, these numbers are gonna be a little large. So that's going to be 1239.04. Did not leave myself a very wide margin. $22.93 squared, oh my gosh, is 525.7849. Now, I know some of you are thinking to yourself, can I round these? Um, I would encourage you not to round them until the end of the problem, because if you round them early in the problem, you're creating a larger margin of error. So I would use the entire number, even though it's, um, pretty uh, cumbersome. 16.45 squared is 
6025 and 4582. I do wish that I had left myself a little bit more room for this problem, but I didn't. 2099.4724. Boy, that's hard to read. All right, 54 point, you know what I'm gonna do? Hang on a second here, take that one out of there. I am simply going to erase this column, this here, like this, and move it over a little bit because I don't think that the numbers for y squared are gonna be quite as bad. They're not gonna be great, but I think they won't be as bad. So let me do 2293 again. Hang on a second here, let me clear this. 2293 squared is 525.7849 and 21645. Uh, Squared is 270.6025, a little better. 45.82 squared is 2099.4724, dollars and sixteen cents squared is 2933.3056. By the way, I would not have a problem like this for you on your test with all these decimals. Um, so this is another excellent problem that if you can, if you can um, manage it despite all of the um, decimal numbers and everything, if you can do this problem and have a good handle on it, you're gonna be in good shape. 157609 for that column. So now we'll go to the Y column. These will be a little bit easier, I believe. Um, 5.5 squared is 30.25. 4.5 squared is 20.25. $2 squared is $4. I can do that in my head. $9 squared is 81. I can do that in my head. 10 squared is 100. Wouldn't even have to write the decimals on those. And 5.75 squared 33.0625. All right, this is a lot of work. I recognize that it's, it's not hard, but there's a lot of computation going on here. So now we're going to multiply out the XY's, $35 and, oops, $35 and 20 cents times 5.5 is 193.6, 22.93 times 4.5 is 103.185, times two, I can do that one in my head, 32.90, 45.85, two times nine is 412.38. I know this is a, a tedious problem for some of you. You're probably just like, oh my gosh, this is taking forever. I can do this next one in my head. <coughs> 541.6, excuse me, I need a drink. All right, and then 39.7 times 5.75 is 228.275. Now remember, this was for six customers, so n equals six. And now we need to add all these down. So this is a lot of work. One of the reasons I wouldn't give you a problem quite this, this detailed on a test is because, of course, most of your tests are take-home tests. Your midterm and final won't be, but um, it just takes a long time and um, it's easy to make a mistake. So I don't wanna burn anybody out with that. All right, so now I'm gonna add my X column, 35.2 plus 22.93, hoping that I don't make an error as I'm adding these down, plus 16.45. Of course, I'll find the error if 
if the answer doesn't match up to what I have in the book, 4582 plus 54.16 plus 3970. So that first column is 214.26. Remember, this is our sigmas that we're finding here. All right. I can do this next column mentally. So 550 and 450 is 10, 12, 21, 31, 36, 75. That was pretty straightforward. Um, for this next one, I am going to give myself, oops, going to give myself a little bit of room here, okay? Because when I add all these up, it's going to be a pretty long number. And so I'm going to start it, you know, give myself more space. So I got 1239.04 plus um, 525.7849. I'm going to need my reading glasses for this one. Plus 270.6025. If you're watching this, I'm sure that this is just so tedious to you guys. Uh, the next one is 2099.4724. The one thing I would say is that if you are doing this problem and you get it right, it just feels like Christmas Day. You know, it's just like victory to get a number this complicated and getting it right. 1576.09. So you get 8644.2954. Pretty big number. All right. I'm going to... Uh, now add up the y squared column. This one's not going to be too bad. Um, I could probably do it in my head, but I don't want to take a chance at this point. So 30.25 plus, I'll do the next two together, 24.25 plus 181. I'm grouping some numbers together. Plus 33.0625. Who leaves $5.75 as a tip? That's crazy. So I get 268 point. I'm going to write the decimal underneath. 5625. We're in the home stretch, folks, here of uh, finding this. Now I'm doing the XY column. 193.6 plus 103.185. Plus 32.9 plus 412.38 plus 541.6 plus 228.275 plus 228.275 equals 1511.94. And then again, as always, the end value is six. So these are the values that we will need <coughs> to plug into our R. So we go to the next page and I'm going to enlarge this. Need as much space as I can possibly get here. So R equals N, which is six, times sigma XY, 1511.94. minus sigma x to 14.26 times sigma y 36.75. If I have made a mistake anywhere, I'm sure there are people who are just going, Mr. Becker, you made a mistake. I'll catch it eventually. This is the one thing about doing it, you know, on video instead of in class is that you guys aren't there live to catch me on it. All right. So Need a big radical. N times sigma x squared. This is that horrible number, isn't it? Yep. 8644. 
minus sigma x squared 21426 squared. Now again, I know some of you are thinking, why didn't you just round it? But the reality is, when it comes to statistics, you want to be as precise as possible. We want to um, be as accurate as we can possibly be, n times sigma y squared. <clears throat> so in general, we're not going to round values until we get to the very end of the problem. Sigma y squared is 268.5625, 268.5625. Minus sigma y was 36.75, which we then square. All right, so now we go back to the calculator. Six times 1511.94. So we get 9,071.64 minus 14.26 times 36.75, divided by, and those, oops, those equal signs, I draw them in and then I just get frustrated by them, so, all right. Uh, 6 times 86.44, 6 times 8644.2954 is, and remember this is under a radical, 51865.7724 minus, wow, this is a big one, 0.26 squared, 45. 907.3476. Oh my gosh, that's just one radical right there. Oh, am I going to be able to make this page wider a little bit? Okay. Times, I'm going to try and write this a little smaller. Um, so now it's going to be six times 268. 268. 0.5625. I think this is going to be a little bit smaller anyway. Yep. 1611.375 minus 36.75 squared. And by the way, I want to commend anybody who ground through this problem because this is a long one and I'm sure that it was frustrating. But again, if you get it correct, it's very rewarding to know that you did a problem this complicated correctly. All right, so now we're going to clean up the numerator. So it's 9071.64 minus 7874.055 is the numerator is 1197.585. Remember, you're going to want to hold on to that for your M. That'll be the numerator of your slope. And then we have in the first radical underneath 51. 865.7724 minus 4597.3476 is actually not that big of a number. 5958.4248. And then under the second radical, we're going to have an even smaller number, 1611.4248. 375 minus 1350.5625 is 260.8125. Now remember for your M, you're going to want this number, the number under the first radical before you take the square root. So now I have 1197.585 on top. On the bottom, I'm going to take the square root of 5958.4248. Square root of that is approximately 77.2. And then the 260, <coughs> excuse me, 0.8125. When you take the square root of that, you get approximately 16.1. 
All right. Oh, and then when we multiply 77.2 times 16.1, oops, hang on a second, I put the wrong number in my calculator, 16.1, I get 1197.585 over 1242.92, we're almost done with the R, 1197.585 divided by 1242.92 equals, <clears throat> R is approximately 0 0.96. Ooh, all right, and that's a pretty good uh, correlation. I'm just going to verify. Yep, the book says 0 0.961. <clears throat> I got 0 0.964. They probably rounded earlier in the problem in the book. So remember, we need this number, and we need this number to find our M. All right, so I'm going to go over here to another page, start it up, and... Um, of course, I don't remember those numbers. I'm going to have to refer back to them, but I needed to get the page open. So the numerator of M is 1197.585. The denominator of M will be 5958.4248. 5958. 0.4248. We're going to divide those out. 1197.585 divided by 5958.4248 is, oh, 0 0.2. Is that what the book gives us? Yep, 0 0.2. That's a nice number. It's actually 0 0.200 and so forth. So B is going to be, again, sigma Y minus M times sigma X divided by N. Remember that sigma Y, if we we'll go back up, sigma Y is 36.75 minus 0 0.2 times 214.26. divided by N, which was six, I believe. So this is 36.75 minus 0.2, doing my calculator, times 214.26 is 42.852 divided by six and when I, oh, hang on a second, my calculator is not cooperating. 36.75 minus 42.852 equals negative 6.102 divided by six. And when I do that, I get negative 1.0 one seven. Uh, oops, sorry about that. Negative 1.017. That's what B is. So when I write that as an equation, I get Y equals MX plus B. Remember M was 0 0.2. 0 0.2X. And it's minus because the B is negative, negative 1.02. I'm going to call it that. Okay, now in your book, the answer is minus 1.05. All that means is that um, when they did the problem in the book, they probably rounded earlier and that's okay. And if I were um, giving you a problem this um, tedious in the book, uh, from the book, I would probably tell you to round it to the nearest tenth or something early in the problem. I would not expect you to do the hard work that we just went through, but I wanted you to see the entire thing. So that is the homework set for section 
And if you have any questions, you can certainly feel free to email me or ask me in class. Um, but other than that, uh, I hope that you have a fantastic day.